and the table will be wide. And the welcome will be great. And the enemy will be confronted with peace. And the stranger will be met with bread. And there will be grace for you and for me. And we shall know one another as children of God. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We gather today as Four Corners Community Chapel to give thanks to God and to worship together. You may have noticed that there are some things that are different about our service today. For one thing, we are not gathered on the church lawn as we have been the past many weeks. On account of some rainy weather today, we decided to come back here online. The good gift about this is that here we are, once more, all of us, those that are near and those that are far, being welcomed into this same holy space and each of us is being welcomed in the same way, with all the grace and mercy that God has to give through Jesus Christ. And so we rejoice in your presence out there in the world today and give thanks for your welcome into your home, into your living room, to wherever you are today. It is good to be together, my friends. Today's service is a bit of the old and a bit of the new. There are parts of our service today that we have gone back and picked from the past. Our call to worship that you just heard was uh, recorded by Arlen and Leah Dow last October. Our gathering prayer that's coming up in a bit will be led by Ray and Nancy Gobiel, and it was first written last summer. Our prayers of the people at the end of the service was recorded this past January by several people who were part of the Gathered in the Gospels each week. And then there are parts of today's service that are new, that you've not heard before. And one of those parts is that we get to hear once again from our good friend, the Reverend Megan Brower, Episcopal priest and camp and conference director out at the Episcopal Camp and Conference Center in Pasco. We've had the privilege of getting to hear from Megan many times before, and we give thanks that she's back with us today. In just a moment, I will invite us to join together in our morning hymn, which is in the spirit of this Memorial Day weekend, O oh, Beautiful for Spacious Skies. Our organist, Vance Westgate, is going to play it for us. The lyrics will appear on your screen. There's no other voice uh, singing it along with you. It's just you this morning, and so I invite you to sing loud as we give thanks and praise to God for all the many blessings of this good land that we live in. And as today, we also remember the many corners of our world where the needs are much greater than our own. And let us remember the gifts that God has given us to serve one another, to pray for one another, and to work for that day when all things will be made new in love. I invite you this morning, if you wish to follow along uh, in the bulletin, to go out to our church website, fourcornerschapel.org, click on our Church at Home link, and then scroll down to the bottom of the page. You'll find the bulletin for the service, along with the lyrics, our scripture readings, and everything else that you will need uh, to be with us today. My friends, this is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. I invite us at this time to sing together, O oh beautiful, for spacious skies.
in darkness, let us hear your voice speaking into our darkness today. For we are alone and so afraid, and we welcome your presence beside us. God, who works in darkness, speak your word into our darkness today. Open us to the wild imaginings of your spirit, for we struggle to imagine a world beyond the one we have inherited, the one we have made, the one we can dream of. Give us a wise and patient heart to believe that only in the darkness can light dawn. And so we look to you, we wait for you, Lord Jesus, to come quickly. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson for today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. Let us listen together to the God's word. In the year that King Uzzah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Our gospel lesson for today is John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Let us listen together to God's word. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, 
so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of God. There's a long black train coming down the line Feeding all souls that are lost and crying Rails of sin, only evil remains Watch out brother for that long black train Look to the heavens, you can look to the sky you can find redemption staring back into your eyes There is protection and there's peace the same Burn in your ticket for that long black train Cause there's victory in the Lord I see Victory in the Lord Cling to the Father and His holy name don't go riding on that long black train There's an engineer on that long black train Making you wonder if your ride is worth the pain He is just waiting on your heart to say Let me ride on that long black train Cause there's victory in the Lord I see victory in the Lord cling to the Father and His holy name don't go riding on that long black train I can hear the whistle from a mile away sounds so good but I must stay away that train is a beauty making everybody stare But its only destination is the middle of nowhere Cause there's victory in the Lord I see Victory in the Lord Cling to the Father and His holy name Don't go riding on that long black train Cling to the Father and His holy name Don't go riding on that long black train Yeah, watch out, brother, for that long black train The devil is driving that long black train May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and especially of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So at the Episcopal Conference Center, where I'm the director, in our summer camp, we play a game called Where the Wind Blows. Everybody gets in a big circle and you have to take your shoes off and have them mark the space that you're in in the circle. And then somebody gets in the middle of the circle and they'll yell out, the wind blows for, and they get to fill in the blank as they want to. It's meant to be an icebreaker. So it's usually pretty generic things that apply to everyone. The wind blows for anyone who ate cereal for breakfast. The wind blows for anyone who's excited to be at summer camp. The wind blows for anyone in shorts. And if the statement that's made applies to you, then you are expected to leave your position where your shoes are marking in the circle and run to another empty spot in the circle where someone else has just abandoned their spot. If you don't make it on time, then you're the person that ends up in the center of the circle for the next go around. And it's your job to decide. The wind blows for fill in the blank. We've been playing this game for years there. It's played at summer camps all over the country. <laughs> Probably different variations or different words. But we love the wind blows. We played it at the beginning of every camp session in the summer of 2019, which is the last time we operated. And we will play it again this summer now that we are reopening. There's something about it, even though I've played it a million times. 
the exhilaration and excitement of wondering if the statement that's about to be said will apply to you, and then the rush of having to run across the circle and find your next place. For some reason, it seems incredibly terrifying to be the one stuck in the middle, even though that's actually no big deal. But it's a fun game. Laughter ensues. You don't really get to know that much about anybody else because it's hard to pay attention to what's happening when you're running around. Um, but it's just a good time for camp. Maybe because... I like that game so much. When I read our gospel passage for today, those were the first words that popped out, popped out at me. Maybe you're thinking, what words? What are you even talking about? This passage um, from John is so familiar to us as Christians. John saying, John reminding us of Jesus saying, God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that all might live. But that wasn't what I heard this time. What I heard was Jesus saying, the wind blows where it will, and we don't know where it comes from or where it's going, just like those birthed from the Spirit. The wind blows. I'm not even sure I've ever heard it before in scripture, but it caught my attention. It could be because of the game that we were playing, but it could be because I've really been on a kick with the Holy Spirit lately. Not in the least bit, because last week was Pentecost, and I just love Pentecost for so many reasons, but more because I've just been thinking so much about the Holy Spirit. She gets neglected, I think, a little bit in our church life and in our worship. And um, while we are in this interesting transition time where we are um, resuming life a little bit as all of the COVID restrictions ease, I have just been reflecting on the role of the Spirit in my life at this time. I took a staff retreat with my four staff from ECC a couple of weeks ago, and we spent some time deciding what is it that we learned over this last weird 15 months? And what is it that we want to take with us into this next chapter of our lives and our ministry? Um, and the main takeaway for me, the, way, the main thing that I learned during this time, outside of learning how I tend to take things and people and communities for granted, and I certainly hope to never do that again. But outside of that, the thing that I reflected on with my group was, there was something about everything on our calendars being canceled and the freedom that came with that. I, I don't know if it felt like freedom when it happened, it kind of felt like suffocating grief and fear. But in retrospect, I can say it felt a little bit like freedom. When all of a sudden we were free from our calendars, free from our schedules, free from the things we always knew to do, there was this huge space, a vacuum, if you will, for the Holy Spirit to swoop in and for us to rely on her in ways I'm afraid we don't always rely on her. You know, we had to just pray for the next right thing. We had to pray for inspiration and creativity for ways to worship together and reach one another and be the church in the world. And we were desperate and we were afraid. And in my experience, nothing makes me rely on God like being desperate and afraid. While I don't wish to be desperate and afraid again like that anytime soon, I know it will happen because it's life. I don't wish to be that desperate and afraid, but I do wish, I do hope, I do pray that we can remember the experience of relying on spirit of that great wind blowing into our life and changing everything and helping us to figure out how to be the church in new ways, helping us figure out how to be people in new ways. And I'm so thrilled to be putting things back on my calendar. I'm so delighted to be with people in person. I wish that I could have been with you all today. I'm sorry the weather prohibited it. Um, I love regathering. I love starting community in person again. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to having my calendar fill up. But even as I do, I don't want to forget that freedom of not being able to do the things we always did and therefore having to figure out how to do all things new. So I have been thinking about the spirit. I've been thinking about her for a few weeks now, being so grateful for the ways the spirit showed up in this time. And, you know, even if I, as I say that, it's not the right thing to say. It's not that the spirit showed up for us during the pandemic. The spirit blows always. The wind of the spirit, even though we don't know where it comes from and where it goes, it always blows in our lives. 
uh, sometimes catching us off guard, sometimes taking us on new adventures, sometimes bringing us to feel the exhilaration that I feel in an icebreaker game at camp rushing across the circle, not sure where I will land. The spirit blows always, but it is us who can't always feel that wind. We are the ones that don't always acknowledge the spirit, that don't have the courage to do what we hear the spirit saying to us, that get caught up in our fear and our schedules and the things we've always done. And so instead of taking risks and doing those things that we feel the spirit pushing us to do, we just ignore the urge. We push it aside. We keep doing what we've always done. As we move into this new stage of our lives and of our ministries, I want to try as much as I possibly can to continue to be open to the spirit, to allow space for that creativity, for that wind to blow through. And maybe, just maybe, to give us the option of freeing ourselves from that schedule when it really feels right. Allowing ourselves to continue to be creative, to look around us and say, where are we and how do we need to meet the people that we are encountering right now? Who is God calling us to be? How is God calling us to be? How can we continue to be the church in new and creative and refreshing and wonderful ways? There are a lot of things about this last 15 months that I will not want to relive, but boy, am I ever grateful for the spirit. And I am grateful for Jesus's reminder of that wind that blows always in all directions, just like those who are born of the Spirit. The Spirit breathes in each of us, in our lives, all the time. We just have to make space to hear that Spirit, to feel that wind, and to be born anew. Amen. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. Help me, help me, help me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh God, help me to want less so others may have more. Lord, you know better than I am myself that I am growing older and will someday be old. Keep me from the fatal habit of thinking I must say something on every subject and on every occasion. God, in these days when the problems of the world are gigantic in size and chaotic in detail, be with us in our going out and are coming in, in our rising up and our lying down, in our moments of joy and in our moments of sorrow, until the day when there shall be no sunset and no dawn. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Whatever this day brings, thy name be praised. nothing else matters. We praise you for these gifts, light giver, sound of joy, wonder of being alive, hope of every person, and our strongest good. God, disguised as a myriad of things and playing a game of tag, kiss me and tell me I'm it. us this day our daily bread. Almighty God, once more into our darkness, out of our chaos, speak your light.
Disturb us, O Lord, when we are too well pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we dreamed too little, because we sailed too close to the shore. In the name of him who pushed back the horizons of our hopes and invited the brave to follow. Amen. Feel the great wind of spirit move in your life and heart. May you have the courage to follow that spirit whichever way the wind blows. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Many the gifts, many the people, many the heart that yearn to belong. Let us be servants to one another, making your kingdom come. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the 
darkness cry.